Zin Chin. Zen Chin? Uh, this man. Even if you aren't a huge fan, like me, you've probably seen his work already. He's an absolute monster when it comes to composition, and his art style is one of the most iconic ones out there. Now, usually, I'm not the kind of person who likes to show off artworks from people way more skilled than me to rack up credibility while explaining things I understand little to nothing about. But in this case, I'm not here to explain anything. I'm here to steal from this man. All jokes aside, stealing is just a funny way to say that I'll be studying his works. Which, if there's an artist you really like, is one of the best things you can do. So, what do I want to learn from him? Well, the answer might surprise you, because his fully rendered paintings are so good that they end up overshadowing some other illustrations he makes, which, in my opinion, don't really get the recognition they deserve. These ones. The ones with the clean line work and flat colors. I don't know, uh, they just look so detailed and interesting and unique. And the reason I'd like to learn how to draw like this is that when it comes to line art, I suck. But I want to get better, so in this video I'll try to learn from him, while also taking you through the process I followed, which you can then apply to your own studies as well. Let's jump right in. So, the absolute first step I took was to gather a whole bunch of his works to make some observations. The more pieces you have, the easier it will be to find patterns and figure out someone's style. One thing that can happen sometimes is that a piece you really like from an artist can be completely different from uh, their other works. So yeah, uh, do some research. Now, when painting, this will be a little less relevant, but when you're trying to mimic the style of a line art, the brush you use will play a fundamental role. So I took a very close look at his line work, and lucky for me, the brush he uses doesn't seem to be any kind of weird brush that would have been impossible to find. As you can see, the thickness of his lines doesn't change much throughout the piece, so I figured a brush unaffected by pen pressure would have done the trick, but then I noticed that his lines kind of taper at the end, which means that they were somehow affected by pen pressure. So in the end, I still had to play around a bit with the pen pressure to output graph to get this. Nice. Then, as soon as I knew I had the right brush for the line art, it was time to start sketching. The angle I decided to go for was this kind of top-down point of view, which he uses quite often. The design I came up with on the spot I combine a bunch of elements from my style with his one, and uh, I gotta say I really like the way it came out, so maybe in the future I could rework her and uh, make a full-fledged painting with good rendering and everything. Another thing I considered while working on this were the silhouettes of his drawings. In case you don't know about this, a silhouette is basically what you get if you fill out the entirety of a character with black or something. This is super important for character design, and uh, in this case for composition as well. But surprisingly, I didn't find any hidden tricks here. He doesn't really go that crazy with shape design, proportions, or negative space. The silhouettes read pretty clearly, and that's about it. It was only when I roughly reached the halfway point of the line art that I realized what may be the most distinctive trait of his style there is a very good contrast, though not particularly in the values or in the colors. The kind of contrast I found to be the most relevant is the contrast in detail. Some areas of his drawings are filled to the brim with tons of details and points of interest. Meanwhile, in other areas of his drawing, he just leaves certain portions very simple. In its entirety, this creates a very pleasant effect. The eyes of the viewer can wander around, 
get lost in the intricate details while still having some quote-unquote areas of rest. This isn't of course something he came up with from scratch. Uh, it's a very important principle to follow in uh, any drawing or composition in general. But I feel like he's extremely good at it, to a point where it keeps his drawings fresh and interesting despite the monotony of the line weight. After the line art was finished, all that was left to do were the colors. And it was here that another interesting thing came into play. You see, Nowadays, it's just a given when you're done with your drawing to add depth to the whole thing with shadows on a multiply layer. And what's so interesting about this style is that he doesn't do that, which makes it even more unique. The reason I think he doesn't include shadows is because then the amount of overall detail would just be overwhelming and even distasteful in some way. What he does include, however, are gradients, so I also threw in some of those. And ta-da, uh, this is the final result. I think it came out pretty nicely, but honestly I'd prefer to hear your opinion in the comments. It's not completely identical to the style I was trying to learn from, like if we put it in between some of Zine's works it will stand out, but that's normal. Even when trying to learn from someone else, there will always be something personal and different about your work. So, yeah, uh, I hope you feel inspired to go study the artists you look up to. If this was useful, or interesting at least, make sure to leave a like. Also consider subscribing if you don't want to miss out on any videos of mine in the future. See ya.